It is late Tuesday on this August 14th, 2012, and as we look into the tropics, we see that 93L Invest now has a 50% chance of development within the next two days. We feel as though that this will become Tropical Depression 8 and possibly even Tropical Storm Gordon, but it's no threat to land as it's going to make a turn toward the northeast. Meanwhile, Tropical Depression 7 has little to no chance of redevelopment in the West Caribbean, but if some of the remnants can get into the Bay of Campeche or western Gulf of Mexico, it will have to be watched very closely. The latest visible and standard infrared animation shows Tropical Disturbance 93L beginning to turn more toward the north, so it is absolutely no threat to the island of Bermuda, but it is likely to go on and become the next system of the hurricane season. But into the West Caribbean, this is the system that we're more interested in. Again, this is the remnants of Tropical Depression 7, and the former center of circulation is moving into Honduras and Nicaragua, and this center should continue westward into more of the higher terrain and have no chance of any regeneration. However, there is a secondary mid-level circulation, and if it begins to move a little bit more toward the north into the western Caribbean, that could buy this area some more time and then pass over the Yucatan and have a better chance once out into the open waters of the Bay of Campeche or Gulf of Mexico. The latest enhanced infrared shows little to no organization, which is to be expected. As of right now, we have nothing more than a tropical wave axis and some mid-level rotation at the most. And the upper-level conditions are not quite as favorable as we need for any development just yet. We've got a very weak mid to upper level trough situated over the extreme northeast Pacific and we've got some more troughing out across Cuba and Hispaniola. So the vertical shear is not highly conducive just yet, although we do have a weak area of upper level ridging and this upper level ridging could begin to move more toward the northwest along with the wave as it aims for the southwest gulf. The low level relative vorticity product confirms the presence of the mid-level vorticity and circulation to the east of Honduras and Nicaragua and based on the latest wind shear streamlines you can also make out the very small pocket of favorable upper level ridging that is at the moment confined to the extreme southwest Caribbean and those vertical wind shear values are fairly low down toward the south near Panama and Costa Rica but this ridge is going to have to spread more toward the northwest and rendezvous with the wave if and when it begins to move into the Bay of Campeche. The low-level steering should allow for this wave axis to continue moving in a general west-northwest to northwest motion around the western periphery of the subtropical ridge. The synoptic pattern over the next four to seven days could play a vital role in whatever happens out across the western Gulf of Mexico. And with all that being said, this is the six to ten day temperature forecast for the United States from the Climate Prediction Center and you can see much of the central and eastern United States is forecast to have below average temperatures and this is the result of increasing troughiness that we can even see today across much of the central and eastern half of the country the very powerful mid-level ridge that was centered over much of the country earlier in the summer that also increased the temperatures and was allowing for record setting temperatures is being replaced and this troughing is going to help to allow for some late season cold fronts to move into the northern Gulf Coast and possibly even the northern Gulf of Mexico. With all of this now in the back of our minds, we can now take a look at the 12Z low-level vorticity forecast from the CMC model. And you see the remnants of TD7 moving into the Central American region and up into northern Mexico. And based on the CMC model, none of this disturbed weather even makes it into the western Gulf. But despite that, you can also see the mischief setting up, or at least trying to set up, very close to the western Gulf because by day six we've got a developing area of low pressure over southern Texas and this would be a fairly favorable solution for interest down there as they are suffering from a moderate to extreme drought but at the same time if this activity is shifted ever so gradually toward the east we could have some tropical activity that we need to pay attention to. You can see the overall synoptic pattern forecast at 500 millibars and as we saw in the water vapor, the mid-level troughing is forecast to continue out across the eastern two-thirds of the country over the next six days. And as we go into days five and six, some of this could be interacting with a lot of tropical moisture over southern Texas. Meanwhile, the latest 18Z run of the GFS is showing a slightly more northerly solution with the tropical disturbance. And it takes more of that low-level energy into the Bay of Campeche. And then it shows more of a northerly track between days four and seven and by day seven we have potential tropical development just to the east of Corpus Christi as it begins to interact with a low-level boundary possibly even in the form of a cold front. 
Depending on the proximity of the disturbance to the mid-latitude westerlies, conditions could become very favorable in terms of vertical wind shear. And this is the seven-day vertical shear forecast from the GFS model. And you can see very strong westerly flow out across the central Gulf Coast in tandem with the troughing that is expected between 500 and 300 millibars. But if it remains just along the coastline, then much of the northwest Gulf of Mexico could be ventilated quite nicely and the GFS has a favorable upper-level ridge sitting just off the coast of Texas. The 12Z run of the ECMWF model is a compromise between the GFS and the CMC. And as we look into the day three time frame, we've got the northern extent of the energy being forecast to be in the extreme southern Bay of Campeche. And it is very similar to the CMC through day five. As you can see, it's keeping much of the low pressure area over land, which is going to help to mitigate any chance of development. But things slowly become a little bit more interesting as we go into day six or seven. So this is now Tuesday morning. You've got a potential front draped across much of the northern Gulf Coast. And by the time we go into days eight through ten, we've got more interaction just off the Texas coastline. We've got a very weak area of low pressure sitting just off the coast of Mexico. So overall, the western Gulf will be an area of emphasis in terms of our analysis over the next week. It's going to be really 50-50 in terms of any development potential. Obviously, if it stays a little bit more toward the south or west, then there's no chance of development with all the activity being centered over land. But if any of this activity can get into the west Gulf, then it will have to be monitored very closely. Also, this is very extended range since we're talking about 10 days into the future, but the European model is also very bullish on a tropical wave that is forecast to exit the coast of Africa within 5 to 10 days. And you can see by August 24th, 10 days from now, it has a tropical cyclone sitting to the east-northeast of the Virgin Islands. Potential for more activity before the end of the month should come as no surprise as late August is typically one of your more active times of the hurricane season. And to enhance those chances of more activity, the Madden-Julian Oscillation is forecast to remain in a favorable state for Atlantic Tropical Cyclogenesis. So we will more than likely see a couple more names taken off the list here before the end of the month. So that's all for now on this Monday evening. Keep it posted to 28storms.com and the Hurricane Tracker app as we will have more on any of the Gulf potential and also any chance of development near the coast of Africa.